Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to create reservations at the various music tech spaces at Capital University. Most importantly, you want to know about the website name. It's studios.capital.edu. When you go to that page, you'll be presented with this login screen. If this is your first time logging into the registration system, you're going to want to go to first time user registration. It'll take you to a registration, uh, register a new account page. You'll determine your own username, your own password. This does not have to be your capital username and password. It is completely separate. Uh, also, in a, a quick aside, the administrators will never see the passwords that you use for this particular page and for this particular web app. Uh, you'll create an email, confirm password name, um, first and last name. Underneath position, it's very important that you put your position as student with a capital S. This makes sure that all of the booking preferences are set for, for you as a student in our spaces. So after your register, you will then go back to the uh, main home page. I'll go ahead and hit the back button here. I've already created a simple student account that I'll log into so we can make some reservations. So when you first get into the system here, you're going to be presented with what's called the dashboard. And one of the more important things to note here is the announcements. Now these are default announcements that you'll see all the time. It's really important to take uh, a little bit of time and familiarize yourself with these uh, graphics here. What these represent are the different types of studio time that are available to you and when they're available. So really overall what you're going to see in this registration system is what's called personal studio time versus sessions. Personal studio time gives you the option of booking your own time in 30 minute blocks, anywhere from one hour to four hours depending on the studio. And then the other option is sessions, and sessions are already blocked off four hour blocks of time. So you can see here on Sundays, there are four session blocks that are already blocked off in Studio A, E, and F. That's the same for Saturday as well. But on Monday, it's all personal studio time. Wednesday is the same. And then Tuesday, uh, Thursday, and Friday is a hybrid of, of both things where in the evenings, there's sessions blocked off. So this will maximize both the various amount of studio sessions that you might want to do in the spaces, uh, but then also give you some time if you just want to go in for an hour to check a mix or uh, do a, a smaller project that doesn't require a four hour session. In the production suites, which includes all of the production suites in the CMC and the conservatory production suites, which we include would be uh, Studio B, C, D, and the VR Lab. These are all personal studio time, all day, every day. You can book up to uh, three hours of time from one to three hours and in 30 minute chunks. Uh, I should note these two exceptions down here, or these two asterisk notes, uh, that uh, there's always going to be exceptions to the rules. Uh, those are handled on a case-by-case -case basis by the faculty. Also, keep in mind that uh, there are restrictions for how much you can book these spaces. So, for example, um, in the suites, you can only book one reservation per day. Uh, in the studios, you can book one reservation per day, but you are limited to only two total reservations per week. Again, sometimes there's policy change, and we can handle those on a case-by-case -case basis. But let's say, uh, for example, that you used up all of your reservation, or you used a reservation already that day. Uh, if the studio is available, you certainly can use it. Uh, that's on a first-come, first-served basis. But if somebody uh, comes in with a reserved time, then you're going to have to leave. And that is uh, what this second note is specifying. Down towards the bottom of the dashboard is where you can see studio availability. You actually can book and reserve spaces from this dashboard, but there are other ways, uh, more simpler ways to book sessions, and I'll talk about that now. To see the availability of the spaces, what you're going to do is go to the schedule drop down bar and you're going to choose the resource calendar. This is going to take you to a page that shows you a calendar of the month. And uh, one of the first things you're going to want to do is take a look at the change calendar area here. This drop down menu is where you can view the various spaces that we have in the conservatory and in the CMC. If you choose the broader category of studios, what you're going to see on the calendar are all of the recording studios, Studio A, Studio E, and Studio F, and any 
uh, reservations that have already been made and then you can also make those reservations here on this page so you can see down here that there's already a reservation from me by this test student here if I hover over you can see uh, that on Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. that particular space studio a is reserved for a four-hour session for a 312 uh, session reservation so it's pretty simple if I were to go to the next month here in September you will see more reservations that have already been made. Uh, if you hover over, you can see that this particular reservation, these are for Studio F. Uh, this is a six hour and a half, six and a half hour reservation uh, from 5.30 to, to midnight for a recording session. So it's pretty easy at a glance to see what it is that you want to um, view as far as reservations are concerned. To make a reservation, it's very simple. You go to the date that you would want to reserve. Uh, in particular, I'm going to go and reserve some time in uh, Studio E. And now what I'm viewing on the calendar is the only Studio E reservations that have uh, already been made. There's nothing here so far. I'm going to go to Wednesday the 22nd and click it in the box and go to Create Reservation. So now we're on the new reservation page. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, there's two different types of reservations. There's personal studio time reservations, which are grid in 30 minute increments. And uh, then there's uh, sessions. So let's say I want to reserve Studio E on this Wednesday. You'll go down through the beginning time and you'll notice that they're only the 30 minute increments. So if you'll recall back from the graphic on the dashboard, Wednesdays are only personal studio time. So if I want to reserve this space, let's say I want to get in there bright and early at 9 a.m. I would choose to begin at 9 a.m. And I only need two hours or so uh, to do this small project or to work on some mixes. So I'll go to 11 a.m. I choose the title of the reservation. Um, in particular, I, I want you to be very specific about this, your, your title of the reservation. So uh, mixing um, and then description, working on a project for music to 12. Uh, the class or the, the session type is required. Is this a class project? Is this a personal or is it other? You have the option of setting yourself a reminder. This is very convenient. You could say uh, I want a reminder 30 minutes before my session time so that way you don't forget and that will send to your email. A little bit later we'll talk about setting up email preferences to make sure that it gets sent, but in particular, uh, this particular new reservation would send me a reminder one day before to my email listed up here. You go ahead and hit create. And there we go, the reservation was successfully created. And there you can see it hanging out on the calendar. So uh, if I were to try to book another session on this day in a production suite, uh, or in the studio, it would deny that request because you're only allowed one reservation per day, either in a studio or in the production suite. So if you reserved Studio E, you can use a production suite uh, that same day, but you couldn't use Studio E twice on the same day or production suite reservation twice on the same day. Let's go to Friday and create another reservation. Okay, so I'm on that Friday the 24th and let's say I want to book from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. I'll go ahead and say that this is a um, uh, Mike or title of reservation Mike shootout uh, Mike shootout for oops shoot out for music to 12 class project go ahead and hit create and you're going to see here that your reservation could be not could not be made because it cannot last longer than four hours. So in the studios, you can book anywhere from one hour to four hours, or in the suites, you can book anywhere from one to three hours. So you'd have to go ahead and change that reservation time. Now let's take a look at booking sessions. So I'm going to cancel out of this particular reservation. And if you'll recall from the graphic on the dashboard, Studio E, Studio A, Studio F uh, allow for sessioning on the weekends. There's four different uh, blocked off four hour um, time slots. And on Tuesdays and Thursdays, there's there, and Fridays, there's two blocks uh, spaces. So let's go to Friday the 24th. And actually before I even do that, what I'm gonna do is slide up here and change which studio I wanna book. Let's say I wanna book Studio F. So now I'm seeing the reservations for Studio F. I want to create a reservation 
for the 24th. If you go down to the very bottom of the options, you will see a blocked off 5.30 session and 9.30 session. So beginning at 5.30, there's already a four hour block available to me. So at the beginning, I would choose 5.30. At the end, I would choose the same thing, the 5.30 session. And you'll see here that is a four hour block that I already, that, that it's, it's predetermined for me. So um, session and description. Uh, session for music 212 project. It's a class project. Go ahead and create that. And now I'm actually creating that session. Uh, let's see here. What does it say? On studios for all reservations, users are limited to two reservations per week. So apparently I've already created too many reservations for this particular week. So I would have to change that reservation. Uh, real quick, I'll look back and see what it was that it's seeing here. So there we go. I have uh, two reservations booked for Studio Studio A and Studio E. So there you can see I have two reservations booked in that week and it's not going to let me create another one. Um, so let's go to the next week. Let's say I would like to book a session on um, Tuesday the 28th. Let's go ahead and create a reservation. Uh, let's see, uh, Studio A, I want to change that. I can change it here, and instead I would like to book Studio F. And again, I'll go down to the 5.30 session and change this to 5.30 as well. Four-hour session, session. There we go. And go ahead and create that, and that should be okay. So this will be my first session that I could do that particular week among the studios. There it is. Okay, um, let's show you one other session booking. Let's say I would like to book on Friday the 31st, but this time I want to do the later session. Uh, I want to change this to Studio E, and let's do the 930, and I'll choose 930 over here. Exactly the same way that you do the 5.30 session, except you might notice that this says that the time is 2 hours and 29 minutes. Be rest assured that if you book a 9.30 session, it is a 4-hour session. This uh, booking uh, app does not allow us to book over the midnight hour. So this particular block is only for 2 hours and 29 minutes, so it officially ends at 11.59, but you are reserving that space until 1.30 a.m. So the 9.30 session is in fact a 4-hour session. You would go ahead and title that however you need to do that, but it is required to uh, create a title reservation description and choose the class type. I'll go ahead and cancel that for now. So as an overview here again in the resource calendar, Changing the calendar is real important to be able to see the overall bookings in the spaces. If you choose production suites, you will see the reservations for any of the production suites that are available. If you choose studios, you will see any of the bookings for all the studios. But you can go in individually to each space if you only wanted to see what's reserved in Studio F at any particular time. Other options for viewing would be to go to the schedule drop-down option and choose booking. So this is more of a grid, uh, a horizontal view of the spaces. So if I were to choose uh, studios, you can see here Studio A, Studio E, and Studio F uh, on particular dates. Okay, uh, so this is Sunday, uh, 8, 19, 18. You could book the 5.30 session simply just by clicking. Uh, same thing here for Monday the, the 20th, or um, if you wanted to go down a little bit further, or if you wanted to go further in time, you could hit the next set of weeks, and I could book on September 1st, simply in Studio A, click, and it'll take me right to the booking uh, reservation information, and I could type that in. So that's another option if you would like. Uh, I did want to point out quickly that you are not able to book time in the spaces more than three weeks ahead of where we are currently. So it's 21 days is the setup right now. Uh, so just keep that in mind. You can't book out way out in the, uh, the future. Uh, again, we understand that there are going to be uh, situations that arise where you need to book uh, really far in advance if you know you have a group coming in. And you can work with the Music Tech faculty to, to get those options put into the calendar. 
Also under schedule, you can go to my calendar. My calendar is going to show you only the reservations that you have made for the spaces. So again, if I choose here studios, we will see all the reservations that this test student made because that's what I'm logged in at. Pretty nice to be able to see only the things you've made, but you might also really want to be able to see everything. So that's where the resource calendar comes in. You can choose find a time if you want. So this is just a little bit different way to, to think about it. If you um, are looking for a, a time that's available in suite number one of the CMC, you can say, I want to look uh, tomorrow at the 20th um, between the hours of 9 a.m. and uh, 9 p.m. And then it will show you all of the available times that, that are there in that space. If we happen to be having a week where uh, everyone's trying to get into the spaces, this might be a way that you have to uh, book, book your time. And then you can search for reservations. These are the reservations that you've made. Um, you know, looking for you. When did I did I book out three weeks in advance? When was that reservation? Just a couple of different ways to, to view uh, the reservations and the things that you've done already. Last but not least, I want to just quickly talk about email preferences. Under the My Account option, you can uh, adjust your profile, the things that you chose when you logged in for the first time or registered for the first time. You can change your password here. But if you go to Notification Preferences, you'll see some options here for uh, when you're going to receive emails. Now, on the Session Reservation page, when you choose down at the bottom to be notified a day before or 30 minutes before your session, uh, that will automatically happen when you choose that. It'll email to the email that uh, you created when you first logged in. But these notifications are for maybe when you modify a reservation. So when I create a reservation or a reservation is created my, on my behalf, you can have it send you an email. Uh, this is pretty nice just as a, an insurance policy to make sure that you actually did make that reservation. It'll send you an email right away. If you happen to go back in and make an adjustment a half hour here or there, uh, it'll send you an email when you make an update to a reservation. Even when you delete a reservation, it will uh, create an email. We do ask that if you're not going to be able to make it to one of your uh, reservations, whether you, you can't make the session or one of the personal studio time sessions that you booked, that you do come back into this scheduling web app and delete your reservation off the calendar. This ensures that uh, all the other students will know that that space did become available and they might want to book it as well. Uh, the one thing that we are not going to be using is uh, session approval. Uh, we were able to set quotas and restrictions on the amount of sessions that you can book uh, one day and one week and over a period of time that uh, you will not need to be approved for any sessions and we'll monitor that usage as well. So there's no need to send an email. If you just want to send, set these all to send me an email, that's absolutely fine. But we will not be using pending reservations when they're approved.